This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, this video I'm starting my brand new sketchbook and it's a sketchbook that I've never used before. So I'm really excited to get into this sketchbook and see how it works for all the different kinds of media that I like to use. It is the Stillman and Burn uh, Beta sketchbook. It's an extra heavyweight paper. It's white, it's cold pressed, and I think it can take watercolor and wet media. So that's why I chose it. It just seemed like it would fit my mixed media needs the most. And of course, the first thing I have to do is decorate the cover with all these stickers I've been hoarding for years. A lot of them are, they're from all sorts of different artists. I am not sure of some of them, but if you have a question of, of about a particular sticker, I can try to remember who it's from. But I have a lot. I've been collecting stickers uh, for a long time. I have a whole bag of them of my unused stickers and I'm not really afraid to use them. I just like haven't really had anything to put them on. But now I have a sketchbook that will accept stickers pretty well because my last two were fabric covers and stickers can go on them, but I'm always a little worried that they're gonna fall off or peel off. So I don't tend to put stickers on that kind of sketchbook. So this paper is smoother than my other sketchbook, but I actually like that. I think the other sketchbook I was using was a little bit too rough for certain media. Well, it's not that it was too rough, but I couldn't get certain looks because of the texture of the paper, but I still really liked it. So it's just fun to switch things up and have like a smoother sketchbook, but it's still cold pressed, so it still has a texture. It's just not like so like grainy, I guess. It's a little bit smoother um, and it'll make for some more like some nice variety in my sketching, so something new to try after using such a like rough paper for a long time. And I decided I wanted to draw some chickens and I went to Pinterest and I just looked up some chickens and I saw this really colorful one and I wanted to like exaggerate the colors and just kind of like get into the sketching mood for the day by using like brighter versions of the actual color of the chicken because the chicken was like mostly a black but it was like iridescent kind of. So its feathers were like shimmering different colors. So I just picked those colors and made those the main colors of the chicken. And I used my brush pen I think it's like a Tombow brush pen, Tombow brand. Um, it's like a flexible nib ink pen. I really like them because you can get varied line weight, which is always really nice and can make your sketches look a bit more lively and natural. Um, so I use that to outline it. I was in an outlining mood today. Sometimes I don't outline in black, but today I just kind of wanted to. I wasn't feeling too like, like just using color. So sometimes I like to just use color to like outline and shade and stuff and it can make things seem a bit more colorful. But today I just wanted to use the old reliable black marker for the sketching because it's just like a nice reliable way to get a dark outline and do some like hatching and just like define the figure that you're drawing, figure. To find the form, the subject that you're drawing, not a figure. I guess it's not, it's not a human, it's a chicken, but the chicken figure, I don't know. I'm also using pencil crayon and I'm using water-based markers. People always ask me about these markers. They're just like simple Ohuhu water-based brush markers, double-ended, and I have so many colors of them. So I just like to use them in my sketchbook for quick ways to lay down color. It's not the most like graceful way of drawing, but for my sketchbook, it's just kind of fun. And it just like lets me use things that are fun to use and quickly add a color without having to mix it with paint or like hurt my hand scribbling with pencil crayon because I love pencil crayon, but it really does hurt my hand after a while. Um, but I think after this, I'm kind of like really feeling like using my watercolor again. I think the next few pages I might try to do some watercolor painting in like pencil crayon and pastels. I have these like wax pastels that are water soluble and I just like really want to get more colors of them and use them with my watercolors. I'm just kind of feeling like I'm missing doing tr actual traditional paintings because I haven't really done them in so long. It's just so convenient to paint on my iPad and sketch in my sketchbook. That's kind of like what I like to do lately. Um, but I was just like looking at a bunch of artists doing watercolor and doing like cool traditional stuff and I kind of miss it. And I, I used to do like involved paintings, very detailed traditional pieces. I have a lot of videos that you could probably find on my channel of me doing like more watercolor based stuff, like doing a complete illustration on a piece of paper. 
I haven't done that in a while and I think I want to do that sometime soon. I don't know, maybe for the next Patreon pack. Not too sure. Also, the pencil crayons I'm using are the Faber-Castell Polychromos and I want to get more of those too. I Did I order some online? I can't remember. I thought I was going to buy some in person, but oh yeah, they had a different kind. They had like the gold Faber. I don't really know what the difference is, but from my understanding, the gold Faber are like softer and I wanted the Polychromos because they're a little harder. So you can get um, finer details for longer, like the point doesn't wear out as fast. I've been using Prismacolor uh, Premier Softcore pencils for like my entire artistic journey and I'm like just branching out into like different pencil crayons. I I've collected different ones here and there over the years, but like in terms of having one single brand of pencil crayon that's all the same brand and you have so many different colors of one brand, it's basically just been the Prismacolors but I want to build up my Faber-Castell collection and I also just really want to like organize my traditional supplies a bit better. Um, I think something that keeps me from like doing a lot of traditional stuff is just the organization of my studio and like where everything is and like things are kind of tucked away and not that accessible and it's also just kind of like I, I find it hard to set up and get going with traditional stuff and I just love drawing digitally. I always feel like like I have to prove to people that like digital art is real art because when I'm doing like art markets, there's like people that walk by that aren't artists themselves, but they're just kind of like looking around and they might ask like, oh, is this watercolor or like what media is this? And I'm always hesitant to say digital because I'm worried they're going to be like, oh, digital, that's not real art. Um, but if, if they're a fellow artist, like I know that they know, but like a stranger, I don't know if they know. Um, so that yeah I kind of feel weird about like digital art if I'm talking to a non-artist because like I, I kind of feel like oh well, what is their perception of digital art because it really is art like you're using your hand and your pen and you're making each brush stroke yourself um some people might say that like having different brushes is cheating but like you have different brushes in real life too different brushes that make different textures you have sponges you have like paint rollers and digital art just replicates all of that without the mess of paint and with the convenience and you don't have to buy all the materials and I feel like you can also do a lot more digitally that you can't do traditionally but you can do a lot traditionally that you can't do digitally either like get really easy natural textures it's just really really cool to think about the different possibilities with each medium and I've done so much digital lately and I love it like I don't even know if I'm actually going to do traditional paintings because I feel like I do a lot of that in my sketchbook but I kind of just want to do like a big watercolor piece again like I haven't done that in so long and I think it would be a lot of fun for the next patreon pack um, and speaking of patreon April's almost over and that means there's only a couple days left to grab the capybara pack you can either grab just the sticker for a lower price or just the prints for a lower price or you can grab everything for the 16 US dollar rate shipping included no matter where you live grab yourself a capybara print. I think the sticker is really cute too if you just want to like collect stickers. And all of these tiers come with my backlog of content of like sketchbook scans and I have some old podcasts and newsletters. There's like over a hundred posts of like digital rewards you can check out that come with the physical rewards. Just wanted to let you know, little Patreon advertisement. Now for a quick break to thank this video sponsor, which is Squarespace. I made my website using Squarespace and it was really easy because they have so many templates to choose from. And I just kind of chose one as a starting off point and I changed a bunch of stuff about it to fit my needs, like the font and the colors and the arrangement. And their portfolios and galleries feature is really easy to use. You just upload all your images, drag and drop them to rearrange them in the order that you want and then save and the automatic image scaling takes care of displaying your images nicely beside each other in a very even grid. I added some of the paintings I did in the last few months to my website and kind of reorganized things and took away old art that I don't really want to show there anymore. I try to keep it kind of curated, but I like to show a variety of the kinds of art that I do. I also always make sure to link all my socials on my website so that people can find my Instagram and my YouTube, my Patreon, because that's the main part of my art business. If this sounds interesting to you, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash gel arts and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the video. Um, after drawing the chickens, I really wanted to draw some morning doves because I saw a photo of a morning dove and I was like, oh, I really like these little guys. I just kind of want to draw um, a few more birds 
I think they're actually one of my favorite birds because they're just like really slow. Like they they walk slowly when when they're like in the middle of the road and a car is coming. They just like take their time. I think they might not be the sharpest birds, but maybe they are. I actually don't know what their intelligence is like, but they just seem like kind of derpy and cute and sweet. Um, and I just really like their colors. They have some like shiny feathers and there's a lot of morning doves in my area and they kind of mark like the start of like spring and summer almost like robins definitely do too but morning doves are just like when you hear a morning dove calling outside it just like kind of sounds like it's going to be a nice day so i wanted to draw them but i didn't really stay true to their colors i just kind of was using a bunch of markers and stuff um i'm really feeling like i do want to start using watercolors again a lot more i'm getting a little bit tired of just doing markers but it's honestly just like a convenience thing and not wanting to pull out my paintbrush and stuff but I, I saw someone using one of those those water brushes that have water in the like reservoir and the water comes out automatically and I was like oh I, I should use those again some people don't like them because they like it's hard to control the water flow but I think if you're just doing like sketchbooking or if you want to like paint on the go I think I would like to use them again I used to use them all the time so much that like my mom got me like a pack of a bunch of different shaped brushes I, I should really get into that again um maybe i should like paint after i record this video but yeah i basically just want to like explore more traditional media in the sketchbook it's really big it's like i don't remember how big it is it's like bigger than eight and a half by 11 paper i think it's like taller but narrower it might be like eight by 11 okay then it's not bigger but it's like it, I think it's like a really good size sketchbook. It's not very like portable because it is kind of big, but I do think it's like, it, it's like a good size for drawing like a, as much as you want. There's, there's a lot of space. It feels like there's a lot of space on the page and you can like really spread out because some sketchbooks feel so little and like I'm afraid to do anything too big because I might take up too much space in the page or, or whatever. But when it's a big sketchbook, you can do like bigger drawings and just like doing bigger art can feel like more freeing because you're like using your entire arm instead of just your wrist to draw. Um, I also saw some photos of cats carrying fish in their mouths and I just think it's like a cute aesthetic. I don't really know why. Just like a cat with like a little fish. It's like his little snack that he caught. I also really like fish. Like I have a pet fish and I don't know why I'm okay with like seeing a lot of like essentially dead fish in cats mouths but there's just, I don't know. It, it, it's different if it's like the cat caught it itself or like it got it from like a market or I don't know it's not like the same as a fish that I keep as pets but I don't know I just think it's like kind of cute to see them carrying like a little a little prize something that that they caught um and for this cat I wanted to make the black on it purple and just like draw in all the like black areas if you want to see the reference photos that i used for this sketchbook session um they should be on my pinterest under drawing references you should see them there and all my past videos i try to remember to save the references that i use but not everything has a reference there are some things that i didn't use a reference for um i like to use references just to get the ball rolling because it's kind of hard to draw from your mind but once you use a few references it helps you warm up without like feeling a little lost it just helps you like get into the flow of drawing without having to use your mind too much. You're just looking at a photo and interpreting it how you want and letting your hand-eye coordination kind of get warmed up. And you can still make some nice art while you're warming up. But sometimes it's not great when you're warming up. It really depends on the day for me. Um, I think this day my hand was getting really sore because I was crocheting a lot the last few days trying to finish a project. And crocheting just kind of kills my hands and I just, I gotta take it easy sometimes because I really need my hands for a lot of things, especially drawing. That's like the most important thing that I need my hands for. But I had a lot of fun with this page. I'm really excited to continue to use this sketchbook and to show you more of my drawings in it. I really want to start like using my watercolors again because I used to use them all the time. And I want to start implementing those wax pastels a little bit more. I just feel like I can't right now because most of the colors I have are very bright and I want some more like muted colors. And to kind of fill in the gaps between the colors, um, I just want more like natural colors, I guess. And some more fabric pastels would be nice, but I'll probably be getting some more soon. And then I'll show you some art that I make with it. 
Um, let me know which sketch is your favorite on this page. I always like to know. It's cool to hear. I think my favorite one is like the cat with the fish, even though I, I'm not like huge on the way that I drew it. I just kind of like the way it looks and I want to do more like cat walking with a fish in its mouth drawings. I don't really know why, but it's just kind of fun. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what sketchbook you're currently using, if you started a new one recently or not. Um, what your, what is your favorite media to use in your sketchbook? Because right now for me, it's markers and pencil, but I think I'm getting over that, that slump and I want to start using more like watercolors and gouache and like more of my other wet media. Um, I think new sketchbook can mean like a new era in my art and I'm very excited. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.